three hours delayed, but we've made it. Welcome to New Zealand. It is 3 a.m. Hi, I'm Josh. And I'm Lauren. For those of you who are new to the channel, just over six months ago, we quit our jobs and packed up our house to spend a year traveling before life gets too serious. We spent the last three months on an epic road trip, driving 11 and a half thousand kilometers across Australia. We loved Australia, but after three months, our visas were up and it was time to tick another dream off of the bucket list. So we hopped on a plane across the ditch, as it is known in this part of the world, and a few hours later landed in New Zealand. We've been in New Zealand for two months already and have just over a month left to go. We've been slowly building our little YouTube channel along the way, and I thought it might be fun to try something new to mark the next phase of our adventure. So here's a bit of a Top Gear style teaser of what's coming up over the course of the next few months, set to a little live music from my beloved Red Hot Chili Peppers, who we saw play in Dunedin on the South Island, New Zealand, a few days ago. I'm going on an adventure! <laughs> to Napier, New Zealand to do it, but I finally get to run with one of my first running coaches again. I love Gandhi Floss. Lauren is in full on wrapping mode. We've got 250 of these mugs to get through. Christmas Day. Oh, it's cold. Mount Taranaki. I think it's about as high as we're going to get, maybe a tiny bit higher over there. And I finally come with promise. And with that, back to the studio. I mean Auckland. Good morning. Good morning. As you can tell, Lauren's a bit cranky. Um, Don't know what you're talking about. It's 4 a.m. in New Zealand, but we are in Auckland Airport. Um, so we are waiting for our taxi, who is on our way, uh, on his way to pick us up. I'm very tidy. I'm then going to wake up our Airbnb host, uh, and hopefully she'll let us in, and we will get we'll, we will get a few a few hours kip. I mean, it's only like one in the morning our time, but um, it's been a tiring day. The sun will be up in like two hours. Yeah, and then we're going to go see New Zealand. Bye. Good morning from Auckland. You got a bit of ocean down there. The really beautiful Trinity Cathedral here. My gorgeous wife and co-presenter here. Don't think that's for us, but we're gonna go. Oh, it is for us. Oh, it even tells you how long you've got. Very civilized. And so far, New Zealand is hilly. <laughs> really hilly. But we've only just started. But we are wandering down. Good morning, guys. Oh, there's lots of dogs. We are wandering down to um, <laughs> a suburb called Parnell. This is Parnell High Street, I think. 
uh, and we are going for lunch. We didn't get into bed until 5 a.m. local time thanks to a delayed flight and the time difference, so we're a bit zonked. <laughs> so today is going to be a relaxed, easy day. Welcome to Parnell Village. It's really cute, really quaint. That is our first good look during the day at the Sky Tower. Auckland, yes! So much, yes! Time for our first bite of food in New Zealand. Would you like to do the honours, darling? It's a big moment. Oh wow, look at that, it looks great. Just going for, oh that's a good, good gooey egg. I mean, it's not really like a bite of food, but we're going to call it there. We're starving. See you later. We are a bit jet lagged, so we just went for a coffee. Uh, and whilst walking to find coffee, we found this. It's really nice here. Josh is going to buy me a Chanel and a Tiffany. I'll, I'll edit that out later. <laughs> I'll edit that out later. <laughs> Look at this. What a lovely little urban space, a few shops, coffee's super cheap. So far, I really like Auckland. It's really nice. Our Airbnb didn't have any cooking facilities, so we ordered a pizza and then got an early night. Good morning, and welcome to the Auckland War Memorial Museum. some of the local residents. The Auckland Museum is up there with the very best of the museums in New Zealand. It offers a brilliant overview of the history, geography, politics and culture of this fascinating place and it's a great way to get oriented at the start of a Kiwi adventure. One of New Zealand's most important legal documents is the Treaty of Waitangi. If you aren't going to get the chance to go to Waitangi itself, which we'll get to later, make sure to stop at this point in the museum and study up. That is an so this is a kiwi. It's the national bird of Australia and why Australians are called kiwis. And hopefully we'll, uh, hopefully we'll see some on our travels, but they're nocturnal flightless birds and apparently they're a bit difficult to spot. Challenge accepted. On the second floor now in the War Memorial. Wow, look at this. They whom the inscriptions upon these walls commemorate are those from the provincial district of Auckland, who met the call of the king and country, left all that was dear to them, endured hardness, faced danger, and finally passed out of the sight of men by the path of duty and self-sacrifice, giving their lives that others might live in freedom. Let those who come after see to it that their names be not forgotten. And there's the record of the fallen there. What a heartbreaking job to write all those names. As was the case in Australia, New Zealanders who fought and died in Korea, Malaya, and Vietnam. One person who died in each of Bosnia and Kuwait, and then East Timor and Afghanistan. Just next to the memorial wall is a small but really beautifully presented exhibition about New Zealand's involvement in World War I and World War II. This is a copy of the document that the Japanese signed bringing World War II to an end. Never seen a copy of it before. We initially thought we were going to spend just a couple of hours here, but there was just so much to see, we ended up spending the best part of a day. And some traditional tattooing implements here. And Lauren spotted this guy, who connoisseurs of fine movies will recognise. 
what can I say except you're welcome. This is the ice axe that Sir Edmund Hillary used to cut his way to the top of Everest. How amazing is that? It's a brilliant exhibit here about volcanoes. New Zealand is of course built on tectonic plates. There are volcanoes everywhere around here. But it's interesting to know how they monitor them and the various plans that they've got in place in the event of an eruption. So we are currently standing on the rim of a volcano. So we're learning a bit about uh, some of the dangers of volcanoes, many of which are obvious but some of which are not. Check out this story. Death by suffocation. So large clouds of volcanic ash uh, can collapse under their own weight. When they do, they can travel 150 meters per second for 100 kilometers from their source. In 1902, the city of Saint-Pierre in the French colony of Martinique in the Caribbean was engulfed in a flow by a nearby mountain. The local governor had refused to let people leave because he wanted uh, votes in an election. Um, and the city disappeared in a few minutes in one such flow. Can you believe this? Only two of the 28,000 inhabitants survived. One was a prisoner who was locked in solitary confinement in a cell that had one window facing away from the volcano. Uh, the surge went over the top of the cell but didn't enter it. And afterwards he was pardoned. That's an image from there. What a thing to survive, what a way to survive it. We are in Newmarket, which is a busy, buzzy suburb of Auckland, uh, only about 15-20 minutes from the CBD. Um, but it's really nice, full of shops. Auckland is quite a hilly place, but it's quite pretty in the right light and conditions. Isn't that beautiful? The next day, we did something a little unusual. This is my former colleague Mark Fennessy. He's about to crush a 215 kilogram deadlift. Mark was competing in the Commonwealth Masters Powerlifting Championships, and it just so happened to be in Auckland at the same time as we were there. In case, like us, you are not familiar with powerlifting tournaments, Participants are required to perform their best squat, bench press and deadlift over several rounds of lifts. The total weight that they move is added up to give an overall score, with the highest total score winning. After several hours of competition, Mark had to deadlift 250 kilos for a bronze, which of course he damn well did. Mark brought home a Commonwealth bronze medal, and he even took us out for breakfast the next morning. What a guy. Good morning from Auckland Town Hall. Looks nice. Today is our day for exploring the CBD. You can't go far around here without seeing the Sky Tower. We're going up that in a bit, but for now, um, we're gonna go and check out the art museum, which we have been very strongly recommended. In we go. The Auckland Art Museum is a small but beautifully presented collection of pieces from New Zealand, covering historical, contemporary and modern works both by Maori artists and the Europeans who have settled here. I'm a big fan of rugby, but I didn't know that this was its origin story. So the high contact sport of rugby plays a star role in the story of British imperial manliness. Invented at rugby school in the 1820s, it was hailed as the ideal sport to develop strength and discipline in Britain's future leaders. Embraced in the 1880s by the working classes, 1890s it came to New Zealand and Australia. 
and in the 30s was then promoted as a patriotic sport that prepared men to defend the British Empire. There you go. Bit of life drawing going on in the middle of the uh, art gallery. Why not? So this artist, Robin White, was fascinated with this hill that she could see from her studio. How about that for a slightly strange balancing act? A couple of glasses with a ball in the middle. And two shovels. Time to go up. Look at that. Brilliant. Come for a little walk with me around the view from the top of the Sky Tower here in Auckland. We are about 220 meters in the air. It feels higher. You can see how hilly this place is. We're standing on top of, I think it's 21 volcanoes and Auckland just sort of sits on top of and amongst them. And it's really beautiful. Look at the ocean. Little marina down there. Someone's got a very vulgar bright gold boat. God, look at that. Super yacht down there. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, if you can afford it. No, <laughs> just. I don't know. So, all these peaks that you're seeing, these are all volcanoes. Wow, that's so pretty. <laughs> that over there on the hill is the Auckland Museum that we visited yesterday. And we're staying somewhere down there. What a spot. Yeah, the camera in a minute. That's uh, Auckland Town Hall down there. Triangle shaped building. That's beautiful. About 1.4 million people live in Auckland. Fantastic. It's a long way down. You'll never guess what we've just found. Check out the trolls. Oh my god, it's smog. <laughs> That's brilliant. With Gollum? Oh, this is brilliant. We are at the Weta Workshop. These guys do uh, sort of special effects for movies, including, as you can see, The Lord of the Rings. Oh, wow. Wouldn't want to piss him off. Or him. Or that. Or this. <laughs> It's brilliant. Oh, it's fabulous. And it's eye moves, which I love. Yeah, absolutely. Say hello to Colin. I think I've died and gone to nerd heaven. It's amazing. A quick shout out to my fellow Lord of the Rings fans. Don't worry, there's plenty more coming for you all in future videos. All right. Time to go see what it takes to be an All Black. Unfortunately, you aren't allowed to take videos during the majority of the All Blacks experience, but for rugby fans, this place is a must. We learned a bit about the history of New Zealand rugby, 
had to go at making some tactical decisions during match situations and heard from some of the superstars about the discipline required to be an All Black. The grand finale is getting to face the hacker. The All Blacks walk out before you on a 10 metre long TV screen and the ground vibrates and shakes as the crowd roars from the stands. It's awesome and terrifying. And then it was playtime. All Black star Josh Dom is on the lineup. The first challenge was to make as many accurate passes as you could in 60 seconds. Naturally, I was awesome. Hey! Lauren's learning to be an All Black. Nearly, darling. Nearly. Very serious stuff. That's <laughs> what I've done this. I mean, you're nice and close, but still. Okay, we're gonna see how decent Lauren is at uh, spot kicking with a rugby ball. There you go. You want it like there. There you go. Go on, darling. Oh. You won't be surprised to hear, I was brilliant at this one also. And finally, it was time for a bit of agility training. Four thousand to beat. Yeah, it's annoyingly fast. Yeah, so this is a uh, an artwork wall that runs all the way around the All Blacks experience. The names of all the All Blacks and the most recognisable number 941, Jonah Lomu. May he, uh, may he rest well. So what do we think everybody? Maybe Lauren is an international rugby player? She could take Sam Whitlock. <laughs> Cheers everybody. From Auckland. In total, we spent well over a week in Auckland, and the City of Sales, as it is known, offers far too much to fit into one video. So, we will park this one here and pick up next time on the Doms Down Under in Auckland Part 2. We are on our way out to Wahiki Island. What a place! Um, I have got 10 miles to do. How wonderful of you is that? All Blacks changing room. Six, five, four, three. Whether you've been with us since the Stars of Our Adventures in Australia or you're new to the channel, thank you so much for watching and we really hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.